Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Toter from CZT Mariette Lustenhauer. All right. Oh, this is a, it's a neat tangle and it fits the bill of something that I was looking for. So I'm so excited to share it. Okay. This starts off and it has lots of acne holes and I love it. Okay. That's what I, that, I'll, I'll tell you. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll fill you in in a moment. Okay. This one, now I think you could start this either way, but we'll follow this step out and starting it from the bottom. And I mentioned that so that way we place it correctly uh, in your, uh, in your work, wherever you want it. So I'm going to put it down here. We'll kind of go diagonal and we're starting off with a squashed orb. That is what I call that, oops, that shape. And then from here, we're going to do a couple curved lines and, uh, well, this one, I'm going to use the curve of my hand. So coming from the edge, a little bit of a takeoff and land, uh, concept. So like this and as far up as you want. And then if, if you, if you want, you can turn the tile like I did. So that way you can use that natural curve and like this. Now, of course, completely up to you. How long, how narrow this gets all up to you. Now it's time for the acme hole. <laughs> if you've done the tangle laced, one of my favorites, you will recognize this. Uh, I'm trying to think, I think there's some others that use it as well, but what we're going to do is we're going to essentially do a squashed orb hollow bowing around uh, this part right here. So I'm going to start a little ways down and you don't have to worry. I should have gone. Well, that'll be, that'll work. Um, you don't have to worry about hitting the top of that because, and I'll do it right now, but at, and you can do this at any point. We're going to fill in these sides. One of the neat things about this doing this is it's a course corrector also. So for instance, if, well, <laughs> if you made it way too long, uh, yeah, it's not going to help. Um, but if, if you maybe were a little short on this, you can put this part wherever you want and just extend the lines up because we're filling in. And if it, I guess if it's a little on the long side, you know, just do it and make sure that as you're coming around, you're hitting the top of those. All right. So that it's, like I said, it's a nice course corrector and let's make that a little more even. Okay. Cause when we're filling in, nobody knows. All right. Next. Same thing. So this, and this we can fill, fill in too. I just didn't same idea. Squashed orb. Then from here, and you don't have to flip the tile if you, you know, I, apparently that's what my hand wants to do. So that's what we're doing. All right. And this one is a little bit long in my opinion. So let's do it right there on the top. And so that you just keep doing this until you're done. That's a little bit better. Yeah. And so you don't, you don't, like I said, I like to sometimes use the, um, natural curve of my hand. Sometimes I like to be all daring and then we can do like that. And you know, see how this got a little off little bump there. And because we're filling in, if I'm careful, I can just round that out like that. It works just great. Okay. Now, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to leave that like that because, because I just had, just had this thought. You can fill them in or what if you just want to shade and kind of create a, um, a little bit different look. Up to you. And there we have the best of both. <laughs> okay. And that is it. Now, um, in Mariette's sample, 
she shows it kind of coming to a point. I'm thinking. I am thinking. Let's try this. Nope, not with the graphic one. No. So if you wanted to come from this point, let's do it opposite. Starting with the curved line. Oops, let me move it over. My camera all of a sudden, I don't know. It seems like I've not noticed this setting before. Or no, it seems like I noticed it. Where Let's look at over here. It's blurry. Like it only wants to focus in on what's like right underneath. It's really weird. Anyway. So you could start with the top and then. Oh, but wait. But wait. Gotta think for a minute. Nope. I think what you'll want to do. We don't want to do that because we need to work behind the stem. So you could. This would be kind of like laced. So you could work just backwards this way. Oh, and it would be just doing this. You know what? There is another tangle like this. One is one is one that is called, oh, sorry, um, fungies. And it's constructed completely different um, than this. But it seems like I'm remembering, maybe there's one called Riki Tiki, something like that. Okay, but if you if you really need to do it this way, <laughs> Okay, so let's pretend we were doing this all at once. Okay, and there we go. And there we go. This is this way is a little bit awkward. But if you really need to do it this way, you can. There's always a way, right? Now, Mariette in her sample, and they'll say, we'll just take the like take these lines up, because that's why I mentioned you can do however you want. She showed having some things coming out of the bottom. So I put a little note on my version of the step outs, and I think they were they were orbs. So let's put um let's put some orbs. And so the way you would want to do that, if you want to have something, anything coming out, put what you know, leave this as a C shape and then do whatever you want to have coming out of it, then finish it off as you need to, like I just did here, and then fill in the outside. That's how you would do that. Because one of the things uh, that one of the principles of Zentangle is not to have a grid uh, a grid or something that you erase later because then uh, in, in Heather terms it becomes too much like art. Um, it's like not that you can't. It's the idea of Zentangle is you know well honestly it's a way to teach meditation through art. That's why they founded it and it is about patterns. It's about using those elemental strokes and doing them strategically so we create really neat stuff. I think I'll fill these in as well. Um, so a lot of our tangles, though, you know, I mean, they are a little represent representative of things. So that's why I, I try not to put too much of an emphasis on some things. Well, except for to make sure to mention, oh, C shape, S shape, line, or, you know, and using those elemental strokes, that's the language I try to speak in. So that way we at least stay uh, kind of geared toward that. And I do, you know, I don't know. I like to stay true to Zentangle because, honestly, it, it has created, it's so, oh, I can't find my right words. It's so neat. It has opened up the door for me to art. Where it's like, oh, look it. I could draw X probably if I, in my mind, break it down into those elemental strokes and kind of deconstruct it in order to reconstruct it. Um, so there's, I don't know, it's just, it's an interesting line. We've had had conversations on this. Um, and like I say, yeah, it's an interesting line. We'd still put some graphite up here. And I think the other reason I also 
well, I know it's the reason that I like to stay true to it is because I don't think I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll consider myself a Zentangle artist, but that's about it. And I never, ever, ever, ever want to uh, have anyone feel, say, left behind or, you know, like, or like I do. Like, oh, okay, that's too much like art. And then my brain shuts down. And I want to make sure that everybody is loving this, having fun with it, exploring things. And, you know, stretching every so often. In whichever way that you need to stretch. <laughs> you know, your brain, you know, the... You know, doing things like this, it's just, it's just interesting. I'm blathering, but I'm shading. And look at how amazing that is. All right. I, you know, wow. Like I said, this has opened up the door for me. Opened up the door in my mind and then opened up the door in my hand. Kind of, you know, they work together. It's just so neat. Just so neat. Anyway, this fits for the bill for what I was looking for. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please click on the like button. And if you liked it enough to see more, I try not to get on a soapbox every time. Uh, please click on the subscribe button. If you would like to join me for classes or just to tangle online, tangle online, it's free. Every Thursday, uh, except for these next couple weeks, I my PM sessions, I had to move. But generally on Thursdays, 11 a.m., 7 p.m., come tangle with a bunch of other crazy tangle addicts. We have so much fun. Um, and, you know, and no pressure. No pressure for anything. We could take a tangle like this and say, and it's kind of like, okay, here's the step outs and go. What are you going to create? You know, and then you just create whatever you want to create. Um, you know, if you don't know what you want to create, you can follow me or you can mutter along with me sometimes. Follow mom or, you know, because uh, my co-host. And um, like I said, we have a ton of fun. So come and join us. Uh, below the links to the step outs in the description section, you will find my link tree link. And there is links to follow me for classes, my Facebook page, uh, our Facebook community, if you'd like to join us there, uh, just know that there are four questions you have to answer in order to gain entry. Um, and lots of other links. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So come, connect, let's tangle together and have fun. And with that, thank you again so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.